Hello, I'm Adam and in this video I will show you a very nice uh, replacement for CWWK mini PC or I would like to present you a best uh, N100 or N97 or N305 uh, processor board and uh, this is a Odroid H4 Ultra as you can see and uh, let's unbox it and now as we can see what we've got there uh, we've got the BIOS battery and we've got uh, board and no enclosure no power supply nothing more but uh, why this board is so special because this thing is not chinese it's uh, manufactured by hard kernel as we can see uh, which company is located in south korea uh, that means in other words it's not chinese that means we've got a quality product which got uh, fined which got optimized and uh, yeah that's that's the main reason why i went for this one and another reason is that i wanted a more course so i went with uh, ultra so i've got uh, the processor n305 with eight cores but whatever uh, okay now let's go through short overview what's going on there and i've got my cheat sheet uh, yeah you can read that right now but uh, yeah there we've got a cpu uh, there is a single ddr5 uh, memory slot same as the cwwk uh, next we've got uh, four SATAs, which is better than two in a very strange form like cwwk uh, there are four power supplies for the sata drives and uh, next we've got uh, there is a battery header and uh, the uh, outputs are like there is a dc plug for power in uh, we've got two ethernets which are on the intel uh, 226 uh, chipset so it's very okay uh, two USB 2 ports, two USB 3.0 ports. I must say that in CWWK I was lacking ports. I had only two and mm, yeah, both are filled and yeah, I was lacking. Yeah. Display port HDMI and another display port and some kind of a sound outputs. Okay, and what's interesting, uh, there we've got a GPIO pins and the fan header. Regarding GPIO pins, what we can see, uh, well, we've got ground 5 uh, volts, 3.3 uh, volts, uh, we've got UART, uh, we've got USB, HDMI, CAC, uh, I square C, oh, two I square C's, and one UART. So, well, that's something, yeah, it's better to have than to don't have. And there are two buttons uh, one is the power i think o and p power and reset yeah power and reset and uh, what's uh, very interesting there is a uh, mmc uh, slot uh, so you can buy a mmc memory module and you can use it instead of a, a ssd or it's, i don't know the hard kernel company is uh, very sticky to those uh, MMC modules uh, and those seem uh, to work pretty well because uh, oh, whatever it's different type of memory and etc etc uh, okay of course uh, we've got the uh, SSD slot uh, for the NFVME M.2 uh, it's a PCE 3 uh, times 4 so we can get full speed like uh, 3.5 gigabits per second and uh, yes, uh, what uh, hardware I uh, want I bought for this board. So starting with memory, and uh, same as in the CWWK, this supports uh, 
uh, currently up to 48 gigabytes of memory. But in this case, I've bought a Samsung uh, memory, which I've bought to be honest, pretty cheap. Uh, this memory is on the QVL uh, list. Uh, so yeah, we've got uh, those lists and we know what, uh, what hardware is working. So uh, yeah, that's the support what I'm talking about. And regarding the SSD, I went with a uh, let's say not obvious choice because as we can see I've bought a Samsung 990 EVO which is PCE 5.0, 4.0 but I will be restricting this uh, drive to 3.0 and I'm curious what speeds I will achieve but uh, what is more interesting that uh, this uh, drive is advertised like it's very power efficient, etc, etc. So in 3.0 mode, it should be even more efficient. I will see. And uh, regarding efficiency, this uh, thing can draw even 2 uh, watts in idle. Yes, with the more powerful 8-core processor. How they manage that? Of course, they optimize the BIOS. And uh, there is a trick, because if you see in uh, uh, instructions, you will uh, read that the power uh, input is like from, uh, I think, from 14 or 15 volts to 19 or 20, whatever. But uh, there is a, a note if you want to, if you don't want to use the standard uh, pre 0.5 inch hard disk drive, the standard ones, uh, you can lower your input voltage to 12 volts. Uh, with 12 volts, the uh, power uh, converters won't work for the, uh, to get 12 volts on the SATA, uh, there, for the power supply for those drives, uh, but you will get better uh, power efficiency, yeah? Uh, yes, and you can use a 12 volt uh, power supply. And as I mentioned in my first CWDK video, I finally managed to buy the power supply that I wanted. And this is the Minimal NGE 30E12 P1J. And uh, and uh, it looks like this might be too small power supply. <laughs> I will investigate it. <laughs> because as we can see there is a 30 watts uh, value and I need to see what maximum power consumption I will achieve. I know you can unlock this uh, board uh, because there is a PL4 probably in the BIOS setting regarding power consumption and you s can set it to zero and this board can draw a lot of power when it's needed so it got a lot of performance if needed but it can consume much more energy than specified yeah currently i think our by default it's locked like to 30 watts so this should barely work uh, but anyway uh, those i'm talking about the stress tests etc so i'm not getting this uh, load in a standard scenario yeah and uh, yes, uh, towards about this power supply, uh, you have to buy uh, separately the plug uh, uh, which is correct for your country. That's shame a little bit. And uh, you have to watch out uh, which DC battery plug you've got because this have got uh, DC jack 5.5 uh, by 2.1. So it fits the Odroid board. But for the CWWK, I have to buy an adapter which makes 2.5 inner diameter. Yeah. Okay. And uh, yeah, everything uh, we spoke is okay. Now uh, I'm interested in the thermal paste. Uh, what's going on there? Okay. Probably. And will it come off easily? 
no, it won't come off easily. Oh, yeah, it come off. And that's how it should look, to be honest. As you can see, uh, the amount of thermal paste is just very fine. What you will, you can see in the laptops. I don't talk about quality because yeah, it's just standard uh, glow what we can find in laptops. But anyway, as we can see, uh, even there are the thermal pads. Yeah, I see that. Someone cared about that. That that's what that's are my feelings. Yeah, and those yeah, that's pretty nice uh, thing. Okay, uh, let's change the paste towards about replacing the thermal paste. Uh, this is tricky because uh, if you try to put the board on the heatsink and screw, uh, there is a uh, uh, as you can see. There is a problem because the ports are uh, taller than the heatsink, so I had to move uh, around the corner of my desk and uh, let it lie on the heatsink, so I was able to even uh, screw the screws. I am not sure if is it a good choice, we will see, but as we can see it looks pretty poor. We've got the controller and the <laughs> memory <laughs> bank and that's it but that's not all uh, regarding ssd there is a new product from arctic m2 pro and uh, it's uh, twice uh, as cheaper it's twice uh, cheaper as the heatsink from the be quiet uh, i think it shouldn't be worse but first uh, look, we don't got screws, it's like sliding way. I didn't like that. <laughs> okay, that's interesting. I'm checking the clearance and I need to screw it better. Are you kidding me? <laughs> okay, great, great, great. <sighs> Dime. Second try. I just found somewhere a screw. It works. <laughs> My gosh, what happened there? Yeah, it works. Okay, and I have to. I follow this with air. Okay, and uh, what I can say, as you can see, it's a little bit uneven. Yeah, it's like there. Mm, why? There is a big diode, and probably that's the. That's why. Let me check the distance. Okay, that's not the diode. So uh, the SSD is lying on this chip. Mm, I assume there are two same chips, so the, those are the double BIOS, uh, so double uh, BIOS memory chips. 
And uh, but yeah, anyway, it's not touching anything. I mean the metal parts. Even there, there is a clearance. So uh, if you don't like it, don't install it. I would say it's not compatible, but it seems that it will work. Yeah, it slightly touches the top of the BIOS uh, memory chip, but yeah, that should be still fine. And it's the second BIOS. <laughs> okay, uh, so we can install a battery, but one moment. I have to present you a enclosure for this, which I have already printed. And that's how it looks like. It's already with the Noctua fan. That's how it looks. It's uh, very... Uh, with very big airflow. <laughs> That's how it looks, and even we've got SSD and memory access, that's what I wanted. And uh, there are four uh, points, four holes for the legs, which I'm not able to find. Oh, there, I, I just made uh, legs like this with a rubber, which you can buy to avoid uh, markings on the walls, for example. And uh, yeah, just brass insert and screwed and that's how it will work and uh, okay now it's the first test how it will sit in the uh, enclosure and yeah it will sit perfectly and <laughs> there we've got ssd and the memory access so yeah uh, let's close it and check Oh my gosh, yes, I like it. That's how it will look like. Of course, it's loose because it's not screwed, but yeah. That's fine, to be honest. Regarding power consumption, in idle we've got about uh, 3 to 4 watts. Uh, at BIOS default settings, which are designed for passive cooling, we've got around 12 to 13 watts at maximum load. And uh, at uh, BIOS unlocked settings, uh, PL4 uh, equals zero, we get max performance, which uh, looks like it's limited to 30 watts. Well, I think that's pretty fine. Thanks for watching. Please leave a comment and hit the subscribe button.